Hey you guys, how's it going? Desivai here. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video, tutorial video on the 787. Today we are going to be covering how to set up a direct flight plan and as well as how to do an ILS approach on the Boeing 787. Now keep in mind you guys, before we start here, that this video is meant for beginners, so I'm going to be teaching you the bare basics. We're not going to overcomplicate things, we're just going to get right to it. And before we begin, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, leave some comments down below as well if, uh, if you guys you know have some suggestions and feedbacks if you guys have not already of course subscribe and join the colony all right you guys without further ado let's get started all right you guys the first thing i'm going to be talking about or showing you guys is how to set up the flight plan the direct flight plan on the boeing 787 uh, the first thing I'd like to do, of course, is move over to our FMC panel over here and try to get a closer view. There you go. It looks very high-tech, very different from the 747. It looks a lot better, in my opinion. Uh, but don't let all the buttons here, you know, confuse you or anything like that. It's uh, pretty much the same thing or similar to the seven, the 747, except this is more like a digital, digital and whatnot. So, yeah, we're going to get started. The first thing you guys are going to do is search up the airport airport codes of the departure and arrival airport you're going to be using for your flight so in this case i'm going to be choosing a flight from manila to hong kong uh a standard route i do you know probably every day <laughs> just you know to keep uh to keep practice so what we're going to do first is we're going to click on rte over here and we're going to input our origin airport which is manila here and i have it as rpll for the airport airport code and we're going to click on origin now you should see it pop up over here in origin rpll that's how you know it's actually already inputted on the system next we're going to go for our departure or our arrival airport rather which is hong kong so the arrival airports airport code is v triple h for Hong Kong then we're gonna click on destination right here and make sure it's inputted so once you see V triple H on the destination tab here that's how you guys know that it has already been inputted on the uh, system we're gonna move to captain's mode really quickly if I'm gonna quickly show you the uh, flight plan over here so if you zoom out on the uh, the panel over here you can see that it has already created a flight plan for us. This is going to take us from uh, Manila all the way to Hong Kong. And that's sort of your, you know, confirmation that everything has been set up. I'm going to I'm going to avoid using the VFR map as when you try to open the VFR map, it tends to crash the uh, the whole simulator. Microsoft Flight Sim seems to crash. Hopefully they fix that like in the next update or something. But for now, I'm going to avoid using the the VFR map. And we're just going to trust our systems over here. As you guys can see, everything has been set up uh, properly already. And that flight plan is ready for you to fly. Now the only thing left to do is get the aircraft set up for your takeoff. Let me release the parking brakes here. Flaps already been set for me automatically. So initial climb, we're going to climb to 7,000 feet. Uh, we're, maintain, we're going to maintain runway heading. Uh, auto thrust is set to maintain 200 knots. And that's pretty much it. For now, we can perform our takeoff roll as normal. Setting toga. Toga set and airspeed is alive and increasing on our airspeed indicator here. Coming about 100 knots, and our rotate speed should be somewhere around 160 or so. We're gonna rotate here. Right, we have positive rate of climb. I'm gonna put the gears up. I'm still flying the aircraft as of now by hand. Uh, in a few, few, few seconds over here, I'm gonna switch on the autopilot. I'm gonna do so right now. Okay, autopilot has been engaged. Uh, we're going to climb to 7,000 feet, maintaining runway heading. And I have the auto thrust set at 200. And we're just going to fly this... Uh, we're going to fly this direction for a little bit more until we get to about 1,000 feet or so uh, where we can safely retract the flaps. 
All right, right about here, I'm gonna start retracting the flaps. Speed check. Speed check. Final stages. Speed check, all good. And increase the uh, increase the airspeed probably to about 260, and we've been cleared to switch frequencies. I'm gonna acknowledge that really quickly. Manila Tower, King of Flags, and one one two three frequency change. So you can, as you guys can see, autopilot's doing its thing. Auto thrust is doing its thing, climbing to our set uh, in airspeed of 286. So I'm going to be showing you guys how we actually fly the flight plan that we have set up. So now that we're ready to follow our flight plan, the only thing that we need to click is this thing here called L Nav. Turn on L Nav, and what what's what the, what does L Nav do essentially? Uh, you're gonna start following the flight plan that we have uh, created before we took off and it's gonna pretty much take us from Manila all the way up to Hong Kong and from there you guys you could freely adjust your your height according to how high you guys want to be flying and set your airspeed accordingly how how fast you guys want to be going and pretty much you're, you're just going to fly the flight plan on autopilot. You're going to leave it on L nav until we're ready to like uh, switch it off or until you're ready to like, you know, manipulate your heading again. You're pretty much going to be on L nav mode uh, throughout the entire flight. All right. So that's pretty much it, you guys. Now the aircraft is going to fly us to Hong Kong on our flight plan. So I'm going to catch you guys in the landing portion of the video where I show you guys how to set up and perform an ILS approach. Alright you guys, we are now here in Hong Kong and we're just about ready to land this aircraft in Hong Kong International Airport and I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up the ILS for our arrival. Now currently my position is currently downwind from a runway 25 right, which is the runway that we are going to be using for our arrival. This is a 25 right over here and our aircraft is just flying the downwind leg of the traffic pattern. If you guys don't know what traffic patterns are, I would highly recommend doing a quick Google search on it. And just so you guys can understand the, uh, the, the, the terms that I'm using in this video, downwind, base, uh, just so you guys have a better understanding, go ahead and search that up. But yeah, we're currently flying a downwind position and this is the position I like normally setting up my ILS frequencies. So for the 787, we want to head over to our FMC and we click on departures and arrival and click on arrival again over here and you guys can see the different options for landing here so we are landing in runway 25 right so if you don't see it on the first page you guys just click on next it should be there there you go ILS 25 right go ahead and click on it once you click on it this green execute button should you know illuminate go ahead and click on execute and it should switch off once you've done that the ILS has been you know set up for for arrival now you could confirm this guys by looking down here in the hard artificial horizon so you can see over here there's a pink diamond for our localizer uh, this is our glide slope and for now, the pink diamond has not appeared. Oh, well, there it is. Perfect timing. So that means we are captured on the localizer and the glide slope. So ILS is working normally. I'm going to open my VFR map again just so you guys can see our position. So right over here is our aircraft. And we are going to continue flying our downwind leg. Now, normally, you guys, for downwind, I like to be established at around 5,000 feet of altitude. Airspeed is about 200 knots, and that's pretty much it. We're going to continue flying uh, downwind leg at 200 knots, holding 5,000 feet, and we're going to fly it until our pink diamond for the glide slope rises up to the first dot you see over here. That's the indication where we should actually start our turn towards our base position. So base position would be when you are sort of perpendicular to the runway. So this is base, somewhere about here. But we may extend a bit further, but generally speaking, this is base. So downwind, base. 
and we turn to base like I said again when the pink diamond gets up to about this circle over here so for now I'm just gonna continue flying until the pink diamond starts to come up so now the pink diamond is slowly starting to come up just right over here and so before we begin our turn to base there's a few things that I'd like to do at this point in time so the first thing is we need to reduce our speed from 200 to about 170 to prepare for our for our turn to our base position so get that aircraft uh, started up or I mean get the aircraft to slow down to about 170 knots and as you can see at this point in time you guys my flaps is set to about 15 and we're gonna keep it that way until we need to extend the flaps for final approach as the pink diamond comes up to the first dot that I have explained earlier we're gonna go ahead and start to turn to our base leg position I had to do the math and my base leg position will be about 160 for our heading and now the aircraft is going to slowly turn towards our base leg position we're flying at about 170 knots we're still sort of maintaining 5,000 feet we haven't really touched anything we're just gonna let autopilot do its work and once we're pretty much established on base position that is the time we are going to turn on localizer mode so you can find localizer mode over here on the right hand side of the panel once we're established right about here I'm gonna go ahead and click on localizer mode this just means that once the aircraft intercepts the localizer the aircraft is going to start towards the turn and line you up with the runway in use, which is 25 right. We're just going to continue this and let autopilot, you know, do its work. We are now captured on the localizer and the aircraft is now starting to turn towards the runway that we are going to use to land. And in just a few moments, you guys, we're going to be switching from localizer mode into approach mode over here. Now, normally I would do this. Uh, when the pink diamond, you know, sort of reaches the middle line. But for the 787's cases, we're gonna switch on approach mode once it reaches about a little bit over above the middle white line there. That's when we're going to uh, turn on approach mode. And the reason being is there is a bug going around right now with the with the approach mode. We're in when you click on approach and the pink diamond falls below the the white line it will actually kick you back to localizer mode but we want to be on approach mode because when you click on approach mode then the aircraft will sort of like descend towards the runway which is what we want but um once it passes this uh, sort of white line it tends to kick us back to localizer mode so right now i'm flying in approach mode uh, i activated it just a little bit over that white line and you guys will see as we approach the white line over here it's going to kick us back to the localizer mode and I'm going to show you guys how to counter this bug which hopefully Microsoft fix we just want to increase our altitude by 1000 and click on approach two times and right there you guys we are now flying on approach mode and it's pretty stable you might notice that the aircraft will dive a little bit you know steeply because it's trying to catch up with the uh, the glide slope but it's okay it's uh it is what it is for now so as you can see right now on the uh, VFR map we're now pretty much established on final approach and we are flying along the localizer and along the glide slope and pretty much at this point in time we could then close our VFR map and get the aircraft set up for our final approach so what that means is we want to reduce our speed right we want to bleed it out to one about 150 and with that, I'm going to set full stages of flaps. Once we got that, you know, set up, we could then bleed our speed to about 150 knots for our final approach. And then at about 3000 feet, you could then go ahead and put the gears down for your arrival. And at this point in time, it's completely up to you guys when you want to disengage the autopilot and auto throttle because uh, you may want to activate you, you may want to disengage autopilot and fly the aircraft by hand at this point in time if you want people have their preferences I like to do it sort of when I'm you know closer to the runway 
but yeah if you want you could disengage autopilot and fly the aircraft by hand but the important thing is you guys before touchdown two things need to be disengaged one is the autopilot two is the auto thrust so both need to be disengaged before you actually touch down in my case here I'm still going to leave on the autopilot and auto thrust and I'll be disconnecting them later on as we approach sort of short final right about here you guys I'm going to start selecting landing gear down and doing my final checks and make sure our speed brakes is armed for arrival make sure our flaps is full and with that you guys we are pretty much ready to land this aircraft as we approach I'm going to now disconnect autopilot and auto thrust and basically fly the aircraft by hand until we reach the runway Power idle. 20, 10. Reverse is normal. Sixty knots, reverses can come off, and welcome to Hong Kong, you guys. And that's pretty much how you guys land the aircraft via ILS. And yeah, it's fairly simple on the 787 actually. Uh, you don't need to search up any frequencies and it's pretty much straightforward. So that brings us to the end of this video, you guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Hope you guys found it informative. If you guys did, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Also leave some comments, suggestions, and feedbacks down below. It's highly appreciated. And of course, if you guys have not already, subscribe and join the colony. Alright guys, once again, take care and we'll catch you in the next video.